Right. Another successful event. Uh, what are your overall thoughts? I thought we, no, it was great. You know, um, we kicked off really awesomely. Um, I think we had, what, five fights, five finishes tonight? Um, and then it kind of dipped a little bit, but Clay Collard and uh, Alex uh, Martinez obviously showed up and, you know, ended the night on the high note. So, all in all, it was great. It was a good night. Who did you have winning the main event? I, I thought Clay did enough in the first two rounds to win that fight. Excuse me. Um, the second round could have gone, you know, either way, I think, because of Clay, in, in my opinion, Clay was winning that round, dropped him. But then with the, with the minute and a half, I think, um, Alex was able to uh, reverse him, to, you know, when they were on the ground. And then, I mean, honestly, I thought that was done. <laughs> I don't know how Clay survived that because it was so, because that choke look was, it looked deep. And so I thought it was done. Um, but Clay ended up, you know, within the storm and, and uh, fought through it. And so, um, yeah, you know, the, I mean, listen, the, we knew our, the fight was that close. It could have gone either way. So, but yeah, um, I, I thought Clay did enough to win the fight. That being said, it was too, it was a close fight anyway. So, you know. Is there a performance on the car that really, really stuck out to you? Um, I think all the finishers, Rob Wilkinson, you know, fought well. I thought uh, he came out and fought well in that fight. Um, Omari obviously, um, you know, fought hard until he got the finish. So, um, yeah, I, I think everybody that that finish was kind of was kind of like the highlight of the night, you know, uh, outside of the main event, of course. Um, but yeah, no, I was happy. All in all, I was I was happy with what everybody did tonight. Josh Silvera had a very good PFL debut. Came out. Um, I just want your thoughts on his on, on his performance. Who's this? Josh Silvera. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, and there's another one. He, you know, he he was able to finish his opponent. Um, unfortunately for Josh, you know, because he wasn't able to, to do the first fight due to injuries and whatnot. Um, so he doesn't. He doesn't make the playoffs, but you know, uh, I think number five and probably Josh uh, will end up being an alternate. Um, obviously, knock on wood, nothing else you know happens to the other guys that are getting ready for the playoffs or guys that haven't made the playoffs. Um, but that's that's the thing about our sport that anything can happen. You know what I mean? So, but no, I was very impressed because he didn't. He kind of showed a. Um, more of a complete game this time round than when I when I saw him in the Challenger Series. So um, yeah, no, it was good to see. I wanted to ask about Corey Hendricks. He didn't get a he, he didn't get a fight. Um, what was the decision to leave him off of this card? Well, because uh, Pester, we actually thought you know we it, it came down to the wire. We thought Pester was wasn't going to be cleared, um, but. Saturday, we get a phone call from the commission, or should I say, Jim got a phone call from the commission saying that um, if he, you know, if he's able to get his medicals in, uh, that they're willing to uh, clear him to fight. And so that's, um, but that's, a, that's, you know, that's the tough part about being an alternate for the season is that, you know, what happened, he was able to come in there, um, win a fight, and then he was off again because uh, Pesta was cleared, um, and it couldn't be. I mean, it could have been anybody. You know what I mean? In that light heavyweight division, uh, but yeah, it's unfortunate that he's in that spot. But that's the spot. You know, uh, he knew from from day one that he was the alternate for the season, and if whatever happens, happens. You know, again, Pesta could have could have been um, uh, denied. You know, approval to fight. And then he would have been in tonight. Um, but that's that's the luck of the draw, I guess. And then one last thing: um, week three, Carlos Leao. Uh, he was um, not listed on the fight card. I just wanted your thoughts on that. Again, yeah, Carlos Leao is in the same spot as Corey. You know what I mean? Um, and you know, Corey. 
oh, you know, what ended up with five points. Um, and that could have easily, because if everybody was coming into the fight, you know, with three points or whatnot, then Corey could have easily made the playoffs. But unfortunately, there were such high points and so many finishes in the light heavyweight division that it kind of pushed him out. Um, Carlos Leal, very, very similar situation. Um, he's the guy that uh, won that fight. Um, unfortunately, he's the ultimate. And so the guy that he replaced uh, gets that second opportunity to come back. Do you do you ever like sit back and look like Carlos beat your champion, so you should give him a spot in the in that, or, or, or it really doesn't really work like that? No, it doesn't work like that because then if we if we're gonna pick and choose, then what's the point of having a format? You know what I mean? So the format is the format, and to f to be fair to everybody, we have to stick to the rules. You know. Thank you. Ray, just to follow up on Corey real quick, he was in last season, so I'm just curious why he wasn't in this season at all, aside from the alternate spot, obviously. Um, I believe he won one, lost one, um, and the fight that he lost, I just didn't think he, I didn't think, um, he was ready to be in the season again the way he lost um, and you know like everybody's tough when you get in there but because of the way the format is set out everybody's like is they're in there they're hungry they're, they're they're trying to fight for that spot you know what i mean and so i i just felt that he didn't have that hunger and i could be wrong but i didn't feel like he had that hunger in that fight uh, itself and so he ended up losing on a decision um, so what I wanted to do was probably originally what I wanted to do was probably let him go get some wins and come back um, but then we ended up I think we there was we kind of took a little bit longer to two so I ended up you know giving him the alternate spot and you know and he took it and you know you guys are getting ready to go international for the playoffs. So like, how exciting yeah. is that for you? And what do you look? Man, look I'm super excited about that. I can't wait. So um, obviously, I'm sure you guys know that the first playoffs is in New York, and then Cardiff, Wales is the second, and London, England is the third. So um, yeah, it, it's um, it's really pleasing, you know, when these things happen uh, because it just means that the PFL has continue to grow. And uh, I think we're in about 160 countries around the world. And so um, when we continue to expand like that, uh, and I think Pete touched it on one, on a, uh, uh, one of the interviews where we're looking to do uh, PFL Europe as well next year. So, you know, there's a lot of things that's in the works and, um, and it's positive. Any ideas for the championship you can share with us yet? <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's still in the works. Um, it's you know it's it's getting close. So, it's, it's, but it's uh, it's it's in the works. That's all I can say about it right now. <laughs> Ray, we were calling Jeremy Stevens versus Clay Collar the PFL fight of the year. Now we're calling Clay Collar versus Alex Martinez the PFL fight of the year. So, in your opinion, sitting here in June, which one is the PFL fight of the year? I probably have to go with uh, Stevens and uh, Clay. Because um, that fight, I don't think we sh we saw a little bit of the ground, and um, there was you know there was a back and forth fight in in terms of these two tough uh, toughness and whatnot, and um, so yeah no I, I but I mean it's close right. you know it's like really close. Man, how'd you like being uh, in Atlanta? I I mean I like it you know. Um, <laughs> This first week, we kind of got everybody, I think all the staff kind of got caught up with everything that needs to be prepared for the show tonight. But I think next week, everybody's going to have a little bit of time to maybe go out and explore some things. And I um, I got to go check out this, uh, what do you call it? It's, um, 
it's not a fish tank, what do you call it? An aquarium. Uh, aquarium. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'm like, it's not a fish big tank. fish tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, a yeah, big, big fish. Because my, my son is actually into the marine biologist stuff. And so, um, I got to go check that out for him. Because um, he's uh, visiting family overseas. So. Well, welcome to Atlanta. Thank you. Thank you. Ray, the PFL is changing how uh, MMA fans are consuming the sport with the season structure and the smart cage. Is there any? Do you see a future uh, where MMA judges have these the same stats that the smart cage is giving fans in real time to uh, use at their disposal? Uh, I think that's a commission question. Um, you know, obviously anything to do with the judges, referees, um, that's all on the commission, and until they. Uh, say that they're willing to look at a few things, I couldn't really answer that question for them, you know? Have you thought at all about open soaring or is that another commission question? Um, again, that's another, that's another commission question. Um, but I, I'm, I thought about open scoring. Uh, we talked about this in the beginning, way, way in the beginning, or maybe after our second year, our first year. Um, but open scoring sometimes can be a, it can be a problem because if one guy knows that he's going into two rounds and he's two rounds up, um, he might not fight. That you know he might kind of slow the fight down in the third round, thinking that he's won the fight. That being said, that's also a mistake because the other guy might be you know hungry to try and finish that fight. Um, so yeah, I, I'm. I'm I'm in two minds about it. I think I, I think the less they know, uh, the more they'll just stay focused on the fight and how they approach the fight, um, like to go out there and try and finish the fight in, in every round. In that same vein, uh, do you have any thoughts about Anthony Pettis' mentality going in with a playoff spot already clinched? Oh, I, listen, I I think Anthony. Is, I mean, he, he's a fighter. You know what I mean? And um, uh, at the end of the day, uh, I think he's not gonna. He's not going to risk getting hurt or getting, you know, submitted or getting knocked out by taking it easy. So I, I think um, even though he kind of knows that he's, you know, he's there, I, I still think he's going to come out and, and try and win the fight and try and finish the fight. Um, that's just the kind of fighter I think he is. Three more questions. The boss has spoken. That might be it. Uh, obviously, you guys... You know, after two more weeks here in Atlanta, uh, you guys, New York, uh, Wales, and, and uh, London, like you said, is there one you're looking more forward to than the others? Uh, I'm always looking forward to the playoffs because that's when you know who's going to make the finals. You know what I mean? So, and the fact that it's, you know, a cherry on top, the fact that it's actually in London and Wales, um, I, I think that's going to be exciting because, uh, one, it's, you know, you can, truly say that PFL is international, it's a global uh, a brand, if you will, and I've never been to Wales, so that's going to be exciting, you know, so, um, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to all the playoffs, of course, the first one's in New York, so. And then, you know, given the markets you guys are expanding into, and you said maybe there's a, a European division next year, next year. Are there other markets? I mean, obviously, you guys are probably working on things. Are there other markets you're looking to get into? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I'm talking to people in Japan. Um, so Asia is, is a big market for for uh, the sport. Um, we've had some uh, things go back and forth with Africa and whatnot. Um, so yeah, uh, we want to be everywhere, and so and of course the the more we grow the PFL, the more we also help grow the sport, and so it's uh, positive in every way. All good.